deputy superintendent and it's a way to um, the second assistant coach of the black exercises. Aside the national team, I'm the head coach of the Immigration Ladies FC. I'm head of sports for the Immigration Ladies Sports Unit. find space. Yeah, so I started football very, very young. But I started playing with girls uh, in 2001. That was after I completed secondary school. When I joined Ghana Tell Ladies. I think I was still with Ghana Ladies when I got my first call. I joined in 2001 with them, and then in 2003, I had my first call-up. Um, I was dropped, and then the following year, I had a call-up again, and I stayed with the team. Uh, so we went for the African Women's Championship in Nigeria in 2006. working then because I had joined immigration in 2002, the second year after joining that illness. And I was posted to Afrao, so I was far from a crime. Back then, football was the greater a crime than Ashanti. But the coach, the coach called me, uh, it was Kuchukwai then. He called me that he had heard about me, but he needed to see me personally. So. If I could find my way to the camp for a few days for him to sort of um, see how I play, it was uh, kind of a justify trial. So I told uh, my two IC then, took permission and went to a craft. And after three days, they asked me to stay. But as a service personnel, I told him that they needed to go to the right process. So I had to go back for them to write for permission and all that. Yes. So I had a call and then I joined them. It, it was exciting. Uh, back then, we didn't have the junior teams, it was just black queens. So it was either the black queens or no national team. So it was really exciting that even not being in a crowd then, I knew I was in top form. And I was very young, just from SS, I think I was around 20 years or so. Joining the black queens, I mean, getting there, seeing the kind of players there. I was taken aback a bit, but after going through the first training, uh, you could see the warm reception from the other players, knowing that they are also good and you are here to help the team achieve their yeah. goal. I felt relaxed. that my dreams had crashed because that was my target and as a player I had I had a plan in place to play the qualifiers to play the World Cup and then continue from there to develop myself through the ranks because uh, I was getting into the team because I started from from the bench but I remember after our second game 
had opportunity to start. So I knew that I was making headways and then the injury came in. So I felt that it had taken me aback. But I knew that because I was young, because the passion was there, the determination was there, I could come back. So even though I didn't go to the World Cup as a player, I had the opportunity to go to the World Cup as an official in 2018 in France when I first joined the Black Princesses. And it was exciting. I mean, the things that I couldn't do as a player, I could do it through the players as an official. So the feeling isn't the same, but at least the excitement around it, the experience, I think it was almost the same. Like I said, because I was determined. I was able to come back. I joined the team again in 2018, but it was in and out, having different coaches with their philosophies. It was in and out until finally in 2015 that I decided to um, sort of retire from the national assignment and concentrate on club football. So from 2015, uh, I concentrated on club football and in 2018 I decided to now get football. Now I just play for fun. I was still playing because um, I didn't want to retire before I jump into another uh, career and it helped me because when you are playing and you have the experience you have uh, uh, the technical eyes you see what the coaches want you to do because you have done it so when you get to the field you know, coaches play the game through players. So if you are a coach and you are playing, it helps you to do it yourself. So that is what I did. Um, along the line, I did my coaching course in 2017, whilst I was still playing. And then um, I think that after 2018, now I had to concentrate fully on the coaching the career. And it has really helped me. It has really helped me. It's something that I always tell players. If you have the means to do it, do it because it broadens your mind on the game. It gives you a clear understanding of what is expected of you at each point in time in the game. Yes, so when I retired, from playing in 2018, I went into uh, administrative role um, because in 2017, I had my uh, invitation to join the Black Princesses as a welfare officer. So I thought that it would be easier for me to translate everything into the club. So I started as a welfare officer of the club, and then in 2019, I diverted to coaching proper because that was a license that I had. So I needed to practice it to be good at it. So I started as a, an assistant coach. We were in a Premier League, we got relegated, and um, the head coach retired. So I took up that position because at that time, too, I was also now the head of sports. So we needed to do a, a, some sort of restructure to get back to our winning ways. So I took the role as the head coach. It's not been easy. This is the second season. Uh, playing in the Division 1. Last season, we thought we were able to get to third place, same points as the second place team. But our group, we only needed the overall best, which is the first position, so we couldn't make it to the middle league. But it 
there's a target for us this year to get to the middle league and then get back to the Premier League. Because I think that is the the level, the standard that we want to be. So that has been our target all this week. For me, naturally, it is, it is nothing special that I did as a welfare officer for both the Black Princesses and the, the Queens. I'm just a proactive person. I always try to think ahead. So um, I always try to see the needs of the team before we get to whatever activity that we need to do. Yes. And, um, so when I brought when I when I became um, the welfare officer, what I what I did was that always I survey the area, look at the area, look at how the job is, the job description, what the environment, what needs to be done, what I can do to make my work easier. So uh, what I did was after the first assignment, I used that to check whatever I needed to make the work easier and then in connection with the other departments too. So I brought in my office. Everything that needs to be done. I don't need to now go to the administration to get it done. I do everything myself ahead of time. Back then we used to have this uh, this embarkation forms and being an immigration officer to order. So I made sure that before we traveled, we had everything already. We fill our phones so that when we get there, we, we always travel with a, a large number. So if you want to get there before you start going through the process, it will take a lot of time. So I always did most of the work ahead of time. So it's just being proactive and that has always been my style in life. I think the difference between the league during our time and now is that now we have a lot of young talents joining and playing the league. At our time, it's because of this uh, our culture and the belief of our mothers and our parents, they were not allowing their young girls to play. But now I think education has gone far. Parents now understand the need for them to release their kids, their young girls to play. So you see very, very young girls playing in the leagues, the Division 1, even the Premier League at a very high level. And I think it's good for our, our game. Uh, the only thing is that you see that because they are young, the level of maturity is not like our time. But I believe that with time, we we'll catch up once we are able to start uh, within their age groups as it is done in Europe. When they get to the premier level, the maturity will also come. Yes, I've always commended the FA for all that they have done for women's game, for women's uh, football, because in our time, I mean, when you even ask some of the current players who Adra Bayo is, who Elizabeth Bedu is, Genevieve Clote. You see Genevieve Clote around myself, and people don't even know who they are because visibility wasn't like now. Now we have football on TV, streamlined live on Facebook. We have a lot of people coming in. Uh, during our games at the stadiums and the, 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 even club level, during leagues, you see the hype, you see media visibility, social media. Almost every club now has a social media handle. You go to Twitter, you go to. Uh, it is it is not easier to get info about clubs 
on social media. But at first, it used not to be so. Maybe a particular club, the one on top, that is all that you hear. And sponsorship is very good now. That is why I, for one, I am forcing to get back to the Premier League. Because you talk of having about 30 balls per season, having uh, football equipment, goalposts, babes, kids, it is, it is massive. And I always commend the current FA for this. The support is great, marketing is good, sponsorship is good. But like Oliver Twist, you always ask for more. Because when you compare what is done for the women, and what is done for the men, there is still a big gap which needs to be bridged. So it's a thumbs up, but we can do more. I had the opportunity to be chosen as one of um, five women uh, football coaches for a program in Holland. And I'm, uh, I should tell you, it was, it was a great experience. Um, we learned a lot in the three weeks that we went. It was a good thing that the FA brought, and I believe that the impact is clear. What we learned, we brought it into the game, and personally, that is what helped me to get a team, my team last season, to the position that we got to. Because uh, for about three seasons now, we were not doing well, but um, the program really helped a lot because we learned how the Europeans, especially the, those in Holland, the, how they develop their game from the grassroots to the elite level. And I think that it is something that the FA should do more. They have to just broaden it and then do more because it's really helping our game. We need to uh, try and get all these things to help our game. It's a good reflection, looking at even what was done before for the men. And the women also got their chance. At first, it used to be all about the men. But now, I think the recognition that is being given to the women in terms of courses and programs outside is really helping the game. We have a lot of women coaches involved those in the Women's Premier League involved. So the game is beautiful now. The level is high now, the standard is going high. So I think more of this will help us. It's been very difficult. Being a woman coach has been very difficult, but I take inspiration from some of our uh, instructors. And I, for one, when I set a target, I don't really look at the obstacles because I know it is not easy to get to the top. But once you get to the top, people will understand why you have to go through what you have to go through. A lot of people see me as an inspiration now. They use me as, as they see me as a mentor. They see that once I've been able to do it, they can also do it. So if we have not started, where would we be? Now you see a lot of women coming into coaching. With the recent introduction of this free license, D license, C coaching, you see a whole lot of the women now coming out. At first, they used to be shy. They used to be afraid of taking up positions. But now, once they can see somebody in the game, as an example, I even see Coach Anita doing it. I even see Coach Messi doing it, Coach Joyce doing it. It tells them that they can also do it. It is not easy, I must say, being around men. But once you stay focused, there's no limit. There's nothing that can limit you. <laughs>
it is your game plan that reflects in the game. So you sort of feel like you are more involved in the actual game that you love than a welfare officer. Welfare officer is just like the administrator. You do all the background work. But a coach, you do the grounds work. Everything that is seen on the pitch, that is where your job is. So it makes me feel like I'm also on the pitch, but maybe do the players. So that is the difference. And I'm, I'm, I'm more excited now going as a coach than I went as, as a welfare officer. Outside. And now we're team, the ball. Hey! When you were with people, don't look. For the young girls of today, what I would say is that never shun your education. It gets to a point, naturally, as a woman, you cannot continue paying. What then do you fall on? But if you have your certificates, you can always venture into another job. Yes, you can find a job within the football area, just as I have. But it is still about qualification. You need the certificate. You need to learn. Even in coaching, now coaching is scientific. If you cannot read and understand, it will be very difficult to get to the top level. So my advice is that they should focus on their dreams, yes, their career as footballers, but never shun education because it, it, it is that which will separate them from the professional level that they want to get to. For me, this is just the normal thing I've done as a player to, to now. We just pray and leave everything to God's hands. I have the belief now that I'm the coach that once I have trained the players, I believe in them to be So you see me mostly relaxed for much days. Just as I used to play, I tell myself that once we are all playing on the same pitch, what you can do? I like to sleep a lot. Yes. I just like to play music and then sleep to relax. Because um, as you can see, I have a lot of things to do. So mostly the stress level is high. So the least chance I get, if it is not uh, maybe reading something or uh, learning something on football or any other area, I just like to sleep. I choose Adria Bayo over Albert Asaki because I had a lot of playing time with Adria Bayo. I joined the team when um, Albert Asaki was playing, she was one of the senior players, Adria Bayo too was playing. But she left, I think, after the 2004. Um, Athens Olympic qualifier against Nigeria. I think that was the last time she played for Ghana. I was in camp then, but I was new. But when I also started playing, I played with Adwa Bayo more. Though I played with Abetasaki and Adwa Bayo at club level, but she left the scene very early. And I had to continue playing the league with Adwa Bayo. So I got used to Adwa Bayo more. And most of the goals that I scored, it was from Adwa Bayo. So definitely, Abetasaki was an attacker. I was also an attacker. So I would prefer a, a, a supplier instead of a competition. For corporate Ghana, the message I have for them is that the future of football is feminine. So I would encourage that you come on board. When you look at the women's game, you can testify for yourself. We are getting up there. 
But now they are getting at the levels that the men used to be. So if you want to invest, this is the time to invest in women's football. And I promise you, you will never regret it. I like old school music. Because I'm an old school person. My favorite would be the very cheap. Woman and the dog. Because everything that we do is about love. And once you have love for each other, you sacrifice for each other. The unity is there. There's nothing you cannot achieve. So what I would say is that Woman and the dog. Woman and the dog. Any yeah, why? Wow, <laughs>